Hey, hello and welcome to this really fun tutorial by Flow Motion. So today we have to talk because I saw this on the internet and unfortunately people are not nice about this. So I thought when everyone is talking about green skin tones, let's talk about color grading skin tones. So is this even color grading or is this already VFX? What do you think? Let me know in the comments below. So for all of you who do not have any time but want to learn something, simply take the original footage, go to U and Saturation and spin the wheel until the face is green. Shot is final, client is happy. Hey, and for all of you still watching, everyone is saying that the computer generated green She-Hulk is not looking that good. So what does that even mean? So everyone is saying that it would look better if one would simply tint her face green as the computer generated image is losing a lot of detail. Hmm. And if this is computer generated, how does it come that I have this original footage of Tatiana Maslany playing her role? Hmm. Or have I faked this out of this? But, but wait, if so, why does it look realistic if the green version is lacking all human details? <sighs> okay, let's step back and have a look on how to create natural looking skin tones first. And then let's simply tint them green and see if this will end up in the same result. Let's do this. So finding the right skin tone setting is super hard when you try to eyeball it. But actually you don't have to. So today we start in Premiere Pro to show you how to get colors to work in your favor. And after that we will jump into After Effects because we have the same effects in there. And we have some additional ones that I want to show you. So let's bring up the color workspace. In this way, we have Lumetri colors and a vector scope already there to work with. So over here, what is this? So this shows us the different color schemes, RGB, so red, green, and blue. And in between, we have yellow, magenta, and cyan, so CMYK. Perfect, all color information we need. So the closer something is in the middle, the more desaturated it is. And at the moment we see all colors in the image. Hey, but we want to concentrate on the skin tones only. So there are two ways to do that. First, we can simply create a mask around a part of the image where we only see skin tones. And now we see only that in our vector scope. And now the interesting part. You see that line here? Well, that is the skin tone line. No matter which color of skin you have, it will lay on this line or it should lay there if you have color corrected it in the right way. So let's quickly bring out a shot where I have set it to a wrong color temperature. You see, it's off. And now I'm showing you the second method on how to isolate the skin tones. So simply go to the HLS, U, Saturation and Luminance, secondary, and here you have a key. But we are not keying out the color. We selected what we want to keep. So you can simply select it with the eyedropper and when you activate it there, you see the mat. And when you take the eyedropper with the plus sign, you can hold down your mouse button and drag over the skin tones to include more. And when we take a look at the scope now, we see that our skin tones are off. Well, because of the wrong color temperature. And now we can correct it in the correction tab by simply sliding over that cross in the middle. So sometimes it also makes sense to blur the mask a bit. And now you can look at the scopes and push it until we are back on the skin tone line. And voila, we have matching skin tones again. So now as we have done that, let's tint it. And there's also a super cool way to do it with the Lumetri color effect with curves and yes, I know when you take a look at them, it is very confusing. U versus set, U versus U, U versus Luma. Hmm. So let me translate. U is your color, of course. So with U versus set saturation, you can change the saturation of a color. And with U versus U, well, you can change the color of a color. And you guessed it, 
with U versus Luma, so brightness, you can change the brightness of a color. Hey, and with the eyedropper, you can again very easily select the color you want to change. So I simply click on the skin tone here and with U versus U, I want to change the color of the skin color. Hey, and when I now select the small dot that was created, which is actually my skin color, and I can also refine that or set points on my own, I can see that up is going into red and purple and down is going into green. So, hey, let's push it down. And while we're at it, here is a really cool use for that that I use all the time. If I have a landscape, let's say this autumn shot, and I want to make it look better or, or different, with the eyedropper, I can select the not so green color and just push it more into green. And while we're at the shot, let's also pick the blue and add more saturation to the sky. Yeah, now we're talking. Okay, now that we know all of that, let's jump into After Effects and get our hero shot going. At first, I'm going to roto her out. So all we do to her skin tones will only affect her and not the whole image. Okay, and I've already done that with the roto brush tool. Hey, and if you want to learn more about that, I have a small list of videos about that topic for you in the video description. Now, let's take a look at three ways to do it in After Effects. First, yes, we also have the Lumetri color effect in After Effects. And under Window, you also find the vector scope. So the first one is done. Second would be the change to color effect. So once applied, we can grab a from and a to color and simply play with you, saturation and brightness again. And last but not least, let's simply take the U and saturation standard effect. Go to the red color and on that top line, we can isolate the red tones we want to have. And for that, it makes sense to boost up the saturation so we see what we are selecting. So once we are happy with that, we can spin the wheel and you see now the bottom line goes left and right and everything changes its color to whatever is beneath our selection we made. And this is, by the way, exactly what I did in the very beginning of this video. So again, what do you think? Did I create the realistic skin version out of the She-Hulk footage? Or did I really use the original footage of Tatiana Maslany? Hmm. How would you achieve this Hulk effect? With a computer-generated 3D model, with color grading or visual effects? Hey, and if you have any other visual effects related questions, just write them to me in the comments and I will answer all of them. All you need to do for that is to click that nice <laughs> subscribe button. Hey, and for now, I wish you a lot of fun playing with your skin tones in After Effects.